All right, folks. You know, I had all my gear at work. I tied up a few flies there as I was watching. I had to sit in front of my computer for basically three days. And if you know what I do, I don't sit in front of a computer all day, even though I am a tech guy. Uh, but I had to endure the uh, PCI compliance training which essentially is just telling me everything that corporate IT is having to do to comply with the rules for processing credit card information. And in today's world, that is very involved, extremely involved. It has everything to do with everything that we do. Every piece of equipment on the network has to be secured Every piece cannot have credit card information in it. I mean, it's just, it's so involved. Very daunting. But those guys have been doing a lot of work. But in the meantime, J-Mo was fishing over at Lake Bastrop. And he was doing well. He had a, a lake record fish. Uh... Uh, a sunfish a big one you know nine or ten inches long so a big sunfish on his stringer dangling below his boat and he had a huge bass a bass big enough to eat a nine inch sunfish so this is a big fish he had a giant bass attempt to eat that fish on that stringer seven times he threw everything he had at it, fly-wise, to try to catch that big, uh, that big bass. But you know, he doesn't have he doesn't have a fly that's nine inches long and looks like a sunfish. Uh, at least not at that time. But that's my task for today, this morning. I am going to try to tie up a giant size sunfish fly i got a general idea of how to do it it's definitely going to be on a big giant hook i don't know if i'm going to use worm hooks and so i've the first step for me is to dig through my stuff and find my really big hooks i'm not even sure if that's how i want to approach this this is this is quite a quite a task i mean i've made Mo bettas. There ain't nothing that works like a Mo Betta. Just a plain old crappie jig. Man, we tore them up yesterday. Went to Somerville. Caught a bunch of little black bass, and, and at the very end of the day, after the sun went down, the white bass moved in, and we we didn't murder them, but we did okay. They were smaller fish this time. There were no hybrids in the in the bunch, but you know, tiny flies work great. But for really big bass, they want a really big meal. And boy, you know, the fact that that bass was hitting that fish on that stringer and basically swimming underneath his boat the whole time, he, he, it was amazing. I wish I was there with him so I could have got that on video. That would have been cool. Actually, what would have been really cool is to have an underwater camera watching that bass come up and eat that bluegill. <laughs> Get some idea of how big a bass is that eats a or attempts to eat a nine inch bluegill Okay, let me kind of get my stuff in order here and Figure out how I'm gonna make this big giant fly. I Think I'm actually gonna do this first fly in Three segments. I'll have one of these Here, let me show you how I'm gonna do it when I what I'm thinking is I've cut that hook off and prob probably keep that hook active. Um, but this essentially becomes uh, the middle of the fly. The bottom of the fly will be here. The head of the fly will come off the top of this hook. And the tail section will be on this hook. I'm... Uh, I probably just need to make the first version a big fly, but not a giant size fly. 
I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, a four or five inch uh, bluegill fly, something that looks like a sunfish, will be enough to entice really big fish. And this construction method I've been using lately with these multiple hooks that run hook up, uh, I like it so much uh, because it, it is fairly effective. I'm going to use a lot of these feathers, especially these pale yellow ones, because they'll, they'll be very good for the underbelly and the back of the fly, and then I'll do darker colors for the top. Basically, it'll be a two-tone fly, a little bit of blue flash maybe, maybe some gill plate. I don't know. I never do until I finally get to build it. All right, folks, we're going to try something with just a little bit different with this build. I'm going to give you the front view, looking at it from quartering at the front. That might work out better. All right, let's do the mid-body first. And I'm probably going to cut this shaft off. This new vise is Terra 8191 rotary vise. It is pretty decent for a cheap $50 vise. At least it holds the hook quite well. Thread types don't really matter. I'm just using strong thread. This is Ultra 140. And normally, well, most of the time I use really, really strong thread, the 220s. Um, but this, 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 uh, Oh, whatever this stuff is, this uh, 140 seems to be good enough in itself. Let me get a few of my tools out here. Hang on just a second. Let me spend a minute or two getting my tool set up. This shouldn't take just a tremendous number of feathers. Yeah, that's focusing good. I'm going to use these. These are the basically the underbelly of the fly. That nice yellow color. I'll probably throw some blue ones like that toward the bottom front of the fly, the top front. I got more yellow ones. Boy, these these fly tires variety pack, man, that is the way to go. You get a whole package of flies with just everything you could ever need. See that? You blend that with this. You know, basically that's the underbelly, that's the middle, and then maybe this being the top, or even darker, like this one, this big cape, oh yeah. See that one? That might be the top. But you just, you just combine whatever you've got to get the contrasting, look at those, those are nice hackle, nice hackle feathers. I haven't even looked in this pack yet. Oh, look, I got some orange ones. Those are good. I use all these colors in this, in this, in these packs. Look, there's some more hackles. Oh man, I got everything I need in this one package. Huh. All right, there's some green ones. I'll tell you what, let's just dump them out. And then we'll pull the ones I need. Oh man, look at those. Look at those. Oh, that'll be great. I think this I think this variety pack is like $15. I'm sure I got it off Amazon. There's some more wonderful looking hackles. The, the way I tie flies is based on my materials. In other words, I don't I don't go looking for materials with a particular fly in mind. I look at my materials and I build what I've got. See, these are all perfect colors to blend together. Hmm, there's even some pink. Primarily, I'm starting with this. This is the middle of the fly, so I'm going to put this on the bottom, put a layer of this on top in the middle, that ends up in the middle, and then maybe this kind or something similar 
to top that thing in. I'll do that three times to give the fly plenty of bulk. Let's start with the yellow. And I'm, I mean, I'm making a big, long fly. So I'm going to use these big, long feathers. I'm going to try to keep most of this toward the front of the hook. Because all this is buried, I don't think you have to be real particular about, uh, I guess you, you, you know, I, I want to keep the, the feathers on a vertical plane of the fly, but, but they're all going to blend together. There's going to be so many layers of them. should be a relatively simple tie. These things will be layered up on top of each other. So that's the this is this is the bottom. That yellow color is the bottom. Yeah, I think that might be a better angle. Now I'm going to take two of these and that'll be on top. Now you've got to be aware of the fact that this is going to be a big fly, but you can't you can't just put a ton of weight on a fly. It will not work. You can't ever throw it. You don't. They don't make twenty weight fly rods. Even though this would, I'm sure this would be easy enough to toss with an eight weight. But I like using a five weight with overlined seven weight line on it. say I'm not going to get real particular about the orientation of these feathers they cuz they're when they get wet they're going to lay back like this that is that is looking pretty nice that's a blending a nice blending of the feathers and this this is going to be in the middle of the fly hanging off of that first hook all right let me throw a couple of blue in here, mainly because a lot of these bluegills have blue color in them. So let's get this and this, two of these, just a hint of blue color. This is not real complicated fly tying. Like I say, I, I do very little complicated fly tying. It just isn't in me. It's more about being able to produce, produce what I want in a fly in a very short amount of time. All right, we've got, I'm going to go ahead and use an orange in here. Because most of these sunfish have a good bit of orange in them. Well, that'd be good for a crawfish pattern, wouldn't it? Which I probably need to make some crawfish flies for the Brazos River if we go there tomorrow. Hope we make that trip. Come on now, get out of there. I want that one. All right. I don't know if I'm going to have time to get two of these done, I might have to do one on tonight. All right, whoa, that one, ooh, that, that did not go well. I got my blue in there. I need to put way less, there we go. We'll put way less of the orange in here by using only the back of the fly. Clear this up. Now, this is not about making a weedless fly. It's about using the hooks that I have. The uh, the very back hook, the one that goes all the way to the back of the of the uh, fly that goes on the end ends up, ends up being like a stinger hook that goes back here. This hook. 
and I can put it up or down depending on how I want it. I guess it makes most sense to go up. That runs hook up. That'll give me a little bit of weedlessness. But this one is probably going to be the one that catches the fish, even though this one is bigger and a wider gap. All right. My uh, impression is that the fish are going to completely engulf this fly. It's going to be a big bass. It's going to be a big fish that hits this. All right. Lots of color, lots of color. Let me go ahead and top this off with a dark, long, skinny feather just to help blend it. All right, these two are perfect. See, now we'll get these two to top the fly. I'm going to go ahead and let them extend back over the top and leave that leave the poofy feathers in there all right now that's got lots of color in it and it's got some mass it's not terribly bulky it's not terribly heavy of course you also have to consider what it's like when it's wet all right let's call this one good a couple of half hitches and then A whip cut all right and then I've used the other type of vise forever now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out because this is the middle section of the fly where's my there's, these have cut here there we go see now we're just going to cut this part of the hook out of here as far up as I can because I don't want that interfering with the first hook. Boom, look out, baby. Ooh, that one didn't go too far. That's good. All right, now, that becomes the middle of the fly. It's going to go on to this hook like this and ride like this. That's actually upside down, assuming this fly is going to run with the hook up. And, you know, it's surprising to me when I have a 50-50 chance of threading it upright, how many times I will pick the wrong 50. There. There, see, now that's, that's the middle of the fly. I'm going to use this hook from this point here and this point here to tie probably yellow deer hair on the bottom and, and a darker material on top that goes over top that finishes it out that way you'll have good contrast when this thing gets wet all these feathers will stay together but this this fly should have a incredible swimming action that's what I'm hoping for and you can see it's already getting fairly big now the tail section is going to be just a simple tail the hook that goes back here it's going to be simple more of this type structure but simple all right, let's do the tail. Straighten that hook out. I tell you what I should do. I should go ahead and get a bigger hook for the tail. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a bigger hook for the tail. Let me find that hook. All right, this hook is a number four. This one right here. This is a number four. This is a two-aught. See how much bigger that is? That'll make a difference. That's what I'm putting on the end of the fly. This is what's going to hook most of the fish. That's the theory, anyway. All right. I really like this new vise, boy. It clamps down. It, it don't move. Okay. This is just the tail. So I'm going to build just a tail. There goes Jamie. The old field Jamie. Got two Jamies. J Mo, my fishing buddy, and Jamie, the oil field guy. All right, let's see. Um, 
dark or light dark or light you know I tell you what I'm gonna use just a couple of these feathers to make the tail section and I'm gonna leave the majority of the bulk of that feather I think I'll run it up to about right here pull that off there we go let's see if we can get that to lay in there right oh yeah alright that's one let's see what we get here we match up these ends all I'm thinking of is what the back oops what the back part of a bluegill might look like and this is just the back tail let's see how's that look it looks pretty good that's just the black tail now what I probably do to simplify this is take one of these and try to use it as a hackle or maybe I should just get my hackle I need bulk in size but not bulk in weight I don't know what could I do hackle one of these let's see what happens well put this on and hackle it see what it looks like see if it gives me any any more mass all right let's swing this around let's put a half hitch on here let's swing this around I've never had this feature before all right let's loosen this let's grab this Let's make use of the rotating vise. And we'll do it this way. Alright, that looks like it's working pretty nice. Oh yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I need I need the illusion of bulk. Okay. Get around this, pin it in. It helps not to have so much string in your loose. Tighten the vise back up. I actually had to make a repair to this vise. The, uh, as you might expect, a $50 vise doesn't have a lot of very precision engineering. <laughs> And most of it I can deal with pretty well. All right, there we go. That might be enough for the absolute tail of this fly. That might be just enough. The other feathers will flow over this and, and bury this part of the fly quite well, I think. It might be appropriate to put a little flash at this point. Let me see if I got... I see a little bit of blue in here. Where did it go? Alright, I got one little old... One little old strand of blue flash. Which doesn't belong at the end of the fly. But... That's where it's going. Like I say, this is this entire thing can be understated. All these little added features are just added features. Whether the fish care or not, I don't know. Uh, but I got the material, so I'm going to use it. There. Now that just adds a little bit of flash into the fly. 
I spread it out a little bit. All right, now let's take this, put a couple of half hitches, whip it. Now what I need to do is find a little bit of tube to slide over that so that when it goes on the hook it stays put. Okay, I need to get my super glue so I can touch these things up. But here we go. Now we've got the middle section of this fly built. We've got the tail section of this fly built. Come on, come on out of there. There we go. This can go either way. I probably should run it hook up. There, see? Now you're getting an idea of what the fly is going to look like when it's in the water. This part covers over top of that, and now I'm getting some length. The tail section goes all the way to the end. This goes almost to the end of the fly. Let me wet this. I need to I need to douse this fly. It's gonna be a little bit of a chore to cast this, I'll bet. Alright, now I need to dress up this portion of the fly, the top and the bottom. I'm gonna attempt to tie right here with uh, probably yellow bucktail. Even if it's way down on this hook. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go on the inside or out basically to cover this part of the fly and give it a big burst of yellow. And then I'll have black on top. I need to see if I can find my black bucktail. And then I'll put eyes on this thing. Okay, here we go. Got to work with this thing attached. Which if I used a different method... Um, if I, had, if I had used the monofilament method here, where I actually ran monofilament and then I could, I could do all my work on this part of the fly, on this part of the hook, and then slide this on and tie it in. It might have been a better thing to do, but I really like this articulated ability on this fly, and I like to retain it. And because there's no hook in this thing, I can pretty well be assured that I'm not gonna get stuck. You see, it just goes around in circles with the rest of it. All right, let me get a good thread base here. There we go, good thread base. There we go. Now, let me get my yellow bucktail, which I thought I pulled out here. I can probably get some of the same effect with these. Maybe this is better for the bottom. Instead of bucktail, let's throw a couple of these on there. Just so that we get that nice yellow color up front on the bottom. All right, this, this might be a little tricky to get this to hang in the bottom the way I want it, the way I need it to go. I'll peel back the fluff. Well, that's one advantage of working in the barn. I can let the stuff fall on the floor. Come back and clean it all up later. All right, I think this will work. Let's see. I don't know how tough that's going to be. Oh, yeah. Okay. That gives me my yellow. Easily, that gives me my yellow. All right. Oh yeah, okay. Now, let's come back to the top of the hook. This should stay in position. Cut these out of the way. There we go. I'm only gonna have time to build one of these. This may be a one of a kind period. But that gives me the yellow up here, see? That gives me the yellow on the bottom. Now I think what I'm gonna do is take another yellow and use it as a hackle to cover up this joint. There should be plenty of room right here 
to do everything I need to do. Alright, let's see. Let me put a half hitch on this. Use this little gizmo. Run this around and around and around and around. Where she stops, nobody knows. getting some bulk right up front just where I need it all right run my thread back up and get a good grip on it there we go oh yeah here we go now let's cut this little heavy end off let's see if I've got an eye to the hook there still exposed Push it back just a little. Run this back. All right. I barely got the eye of the hook. Let's see, if I had more room, I could work further back. But now that really is starting to cover that. Just what I need. There goes Jamie again. Headed back out. Yep, there he goes. All right, lots of color. Now I need to make a determination of where I want that, the top of this fly. It needs to be darker. I've got all kinds of color in here. Let me put a little more flash. Let me find another. Oh look, there's one right there. Got plenty of, plenty of flash just laying on the bench. So let's put just a little bit of flash in here. For the most part, it's hidden. But you don't need a lot of flash. I mean, I'm going to be... This is close quarter fishing, too. You know, and if you think about it, the flash that you have in, in most fish, you don't really see it until, it until it's out of the water and you're holding it. Then you see all that flash. Underwater, you just don't see that much. All right, let's see. Should I use these? Should I use more of these? Let's see. On the top of that fly to give it a dark top? Or should I use... Should I go totally with this? That looks good. Might be a little too much of other colors in there. Now here's some longer ones. Yeah, I think, i tell you what, let's put two of these on top to start with. They'll drape all the way back over the fly. Get every bit of this buried up underneath this fly. Okay. Get this one. Like I say, this is going to be an ugly fly. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And to a fish, this probably looks like something they would like to eat. God, there's a ton of color in this fly. <laughs> what I need to do is go ahead and get it wet and then let it dry in the position that I want it to dry in so it stays like this. See how that looks? All right. Let me go ahead and get the darker, let me get the darkest feathers I have to put on the top. I'll just put a pair of those on there and they're, they're just not that dark. Let me see if I can find my bucktail. It didn't look very hard for my bucktail, but I did find some dark green ones. Let's put a couple of these up on top. Give it a little darker top. Cut this out of the way. Cut this out of the way. Pull all that back because I still need to see the, 
Yeah, those shorter feathers working good. Working very well. All right. Now I've got some new eyeballs in the house. I'm going to go get, and we're going to glue on an eyeball and call this fly done. This goes on here. Just like that, that gives it the extra, extra, extra long. Very little flash, lots of feathers. As a matter of fact, it's all feathers. Let me see, let me get this thing whipped. I think I'm gonna take a black magic marker and darken the whole top of this fly. I am going to get it wet and then close pin it. And whip it. All right. Let me go get the eyes. There we go. These eyes came all the way from China. Took uh, nearly 21 days to get them. No, it didn't take that long. I ordered them a week before my vacation. So, yeah, well, it took about three weeks to get them. Which three times seven is uh, 21. So, yeah, 21 days to get them. I like red, red eyes, so I'm going to put red eyes on this thing. Isn't that cool, though? These were like $2. <laughs> And uh, five dollar shipping. <laughs> oh, the world's a crazy place. Let's let's put this thing sideways. Boy, this this fly looks different from depending on how you're looking at it. <laughs> Which side? <laughs> Man, I make some good flies. <laughs> Anything but consistent. All right, let me get my glue. I don't know where my crazy glue went. There it is. Okay. Crazy glue. I don't know. We're going to try. It wouldn't be a good day if it didn't start with gluing my fingers together. Well, and this one's almost done. There we go. Oh yeah, big blob. Alright, one little spot of glue on this side. We're going to grab a red eye. Try not to drop it. Try not to stick it to my fingers. Try to put it right on the fly. Hold it in place just a minute. Well, they do look good. You know, for fly time, there's, it's hard to beat a good eye. Look at that. That looks great. That looks wonderful. All right, let's go up this way. Do this side. Same drill. Pretty good size drop of glue. Try to keep that thing upright. The glue bottle. There we go. So far, so good. I didn't stick it to myself. I should really be bigger. Oh my God, these things are almost even. Oh my God, they're ter they're they're almost perfect. That never happens for me. All right. Now, there you go. There is the first half of the fly. I mean that that's intended to look like a bluegill. Once it gets in the water, all of this will gather up together, which I may actually soak this fly 
and then hold these feathers in position so that they stay wrapped properly. It should stay oriented in the water in this direction and I may be able to enhance or control that with this, with this fly by putting it hooked down. So I've got a hook up one up inside here and then hook down on the back, see? Boy, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that fly has a lot of hook in it. <laughs> see that bottom hook? That's gonna be the one that does it. That's gonna be the one that catches the fish and grabs a hold of him. But this is intended for very large bass. It's a big fly. Let me go get it wet. Let me soak it so that it, it will conform and then I'll, I'll either put it in a plastic bag or something so that the feathers will conform the way I want them. But that is intended to look like a sunfish, and I think it will. Bass ain't that smart, but boy, sometimes they can be persnickety. Hell, I probably ought to go try it at my pond. Just to see how it casts. Oh, there I go. I stuck myself. See how those eyes stick hold up. All right, let's go test this thing. There it is, all together. <laughs> Boy, that's a mess, isn't it? <laughs> Check these feeders. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> he comes right in here. That one needs some refilling. Well, there's good to go. They're still coming. I'm real surprised. It seemed when I lived in the city, the uh, hummingbirds only stayed for a very short time in the spring. You'd see them late March, mid April, and then they're gone. They go back north. But out here, they stay around. I mean, it's May in there. I've got plenty of hummingbirds here. It's not like they're. It's not like it is in September when they're migrating back through. They'll they'll stick around for a couple of weeks and there'll be, you know, 50 birds. But there's see, there goes two of them right there, hitting the faders. I got at least three of them in here. Cool. Okay, let's go see what my tough judges down the road think of my new fly. Plus, that'll give me an opportunity to get it wet, see what it conforms to in the water, see if I need to put it in a plastic bag or, or iron it or press it. That's what the, that's what the freaking dogs were barking at all night. Those dogs do not like the cows, and the cows do not like the dogs. Oh my God, they're all over the pond. That's all right, they won't mind. They don't mind me fishing. I'm gonna be fishing with the bovine. Ooh, there's one with some horns. Uh, we don't have time to do a pig patrol today. Actually, I'm going to just, I know this is a big fly, so I'm not going to be able to fight the wind as well. Look at him. Y'all better get out of the way. I'm fishing. Y'all better move it. Move it. <laughs> Those calves, they get real curious, and they don't realize that they're 400, 500, 600 pounds. <laughs> if they decide to play, you better look out. What a lovely mess this is. That's my other last experimental fly. These fish down here didn't like it. What? What are you looking at? <laughs> oh Lord. All right, let's see how it works. I'm real curious what it's gonna look like after it gets wet if it conforms real nicely. Well, it's got a big profile in the water, but it is not slimming down. I can barely see it. You, know, you can't see it at all. Yeah. If I let it sit, 
in this shape it will better conform to it but it really comes alive in the water the feathers go everywhere hmm. wonder what the hurry is they're all running from me I don't like fly fishermen I'm bringing up the rear you better get going buddy a bunch of cows losing confidence real fast in this fly it just does not have it doesn't have a good look it does not have a good look at all I think it might be does not have a good look at all I flipped over the hook the back hook so it'd be running hook up I don't think it needs that back hook at all which is nice because I can take it off real easy all right, that's a way slimmer profile let's see how that action let's see how that works I can almost tell you that I'm gonna be pulling some tails out of this thing <laughs> just had my first first judge take a whack at it this fly is effectively weedless it runs hook up it's got that big worm hook in it there he comes again there he comes again come on fishy come on boy this old five weight with seven weight line on it this is a five six weight five to six weight it's eight foot six long it's four piece fifty dollar fly rod and it really it works so much better with this heavier line right, come on fishy where are you where'd you go he was right there come on take a second whack at it in a vicious strike totally missed it though Right in there. Come on, fish. I know you're probably still in there. I don't have my harness on, so the camera tends to be a little more shaky. I have a real bad habit of not putting my stuff away, or at least not putting it where I can find it again. It's probably in the truck. I probably should have just looked it makes a huge difference in what the camera does because you any any movement now you get plenty of camera shake i've altered my casting so that there isn't much shake in it i don't shake the core of my body i just use my arm let me check this fly Boy, it, you know, it's got some stuff stuck on it. That's why it ain't working. It's weedless, but just barely. And the eyes are staying put. That's always good. I probably ought to take some of the bulk out of this. I don't know. I had one fish take a whack at it, so it's not not terrible I think I saw movement right there come on fish I know it don't look perfect but it don't look good enough I do like a rod that casts well I want to use I use the I used Jamie's yesterday at the lake because I was not I was not in my fishing vehicle. I didn't plan on going fishing yesterday evening, but Jamo Jamo didn't plan on either. Uh, at least not in the evening. He was going to spend some time with his lovely bride, and turned out she had an engagement in Houston, so he was free. 
And he said he was going. And I said, hey, I ain't got my stuff with me. And since I live 20 miles in the other direction from where I am at work to the lake, I say, well, just let me use your stuff. So I used his TFO 8 weight. There's a fish in there. Uh, and, hey, you know, it did the job. And, man, the lake was windy yesterday. Terrible. Uh, matter of fact, when we first found the fish, we went on the, on the lee side, so we had the wind behind us. Uh, where the white bass were, the wind was right and straight coming right at us. And uh, we did finally find the white bass. Caught several little ones. Black bass were funner for me. They were funner. They were all little footballs. Little uh, pound and a half, two pound fish. You know, 12 to 14 inches long. Nice, hard fighting fish. Those open water black bass, the ones that are used to, you know, swimming and pursuing their, their uh, shad dinner, they are a strong, and they fight different too. They don't spend so much time in the air. These fish, like when I catch one here, it's, it's almost guaranteed at some point that fish is gonna jump. And in that, in that, in that open water, those fish do not jump. Not like, not like they do when they come from a pond like this. But that, that TFO 8 weight, which had matched line, boy, that thing was hard to get loaded. It did not load well. Until you had a whole lot of line out, which, that was difficult with that wind. To manage that much line, you'd lose it on the back cast, you couldn't get your... Uh, you couldn't get your line management under control. What worked best is where you you didn't bring it in very far. You cast out all the way, you'd get a good cast, you get it all the way out, you'd, you'd work about six, eight, ten feet, and then you'd recast. So you keep lots of line out like this. See? That's probably not that unusual. I mean, they're, they're made to work a lot of line. They're not made for short casts. But boy, that, that wind lately has been a real bear. There is a fish up here. I can just barely see it moving. See something happening. Oh, lure's fouled up. Okay, that's it. That's it. I gotta get to work. Finish up thing, things, close up it up, and giddy, 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 giddy up. Giddy, giddy, giddy up. Let's, let's hit the trail cow patty. Fish don't seem to be terribly active. I'm not seeing any in the shallows. Physically seeing them. That sky's a little bit gray, which makes it a little more difficult. thing right through the weeds. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'm not impressed with this tie at all. That might turn out to be a waste of good eyes. But, you know, like most things, I'll make some serious modifications to this fly. See if I can't save it. But not now. I need to get to work. Act like I'm a good employee. Do a drive-through real quick. Stop at the house, close it all up, get the cats out of there, and get to work. cows in my front yard nope looks like they're not getting in my front yard that's good they are really hard on fences that ain't cow proof yeah they're all gonna be on the neighbor's place before you know it all right well let's get the little truck out of here 
park it up right here, close up everything, finish that load of laundry, and my puppy dogs. They're such good dogs. <laughs>